Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. This is a Kings of War battle report. This will be a 1500 point game, Dwarves versus the Herd. The scenario is Invade. This is game two of the Outlanders Warhammer Refugee Tournament. Uh, played in Omaha, Nebraska. So we'll jump right in. My list won't change, obviously, since it's a middle of a tournament, but I'll go over it. Dwarves, we have a regiment of bulwarkers with the brew of strength, one troop of ironclad, two troops of rangers, one horde of shield breakers with the brew of sharpness, one horde of earth elementals with the blessing of the gods, one army standard bearer who is operating the boomstick, one ranger captain with wings of the honey maze, a stone priest with the bane chant upgrade, and one greater earth elemental. My opponent is playing the herd. Uh, he has as follows one horde of guardian brutes, one horde of spirit walkers, two troops of longhorns, um, one beast pack as a regiment, <clears throat> one stampede, uh, one brutox, a shaman with the heal upgrade, and the Murden's amulet, I misspelled amulet, of the fire heart. And one shaman, and another shaman with a heal upgrade. Uh, so we'll go into deployment. Uh, the pictures in this are going to be a little weird. Uh, we were we were on a table next to the window, on a white table. So uh, I think my camera did pretty good giving giving the the the, the scenario the situation. So <clears throat> from left to right, it is Longhorn Troop, Longhorn Troop, uh, Guardian Brutes. I think behind one of those Longhorn Troops is one of his shamans. Um, <clears throat> then we have the uh, Spirit Walker Horde, Shaman behind them. Uh, then we have a Brutox, the Stampede, and way on his other side are his dogs. So, on the other side, the Dwarfs. Uh, opposite of the dogs, I put both my troops of Rangers and my Ranger Captain. My thought is clear up those dogs quick and move back in the middle of the flank. <coughs> um... Knowing that this is going to be quite a bloody engagement, I prepare for such, and you can see I have bulwarkers. Uh, next to my bulwarkers is my boomstick operating army standard bearer, a uh, troop of ironclad in front of the um, horde of shield breakers, as I generally do. They're just there to die. Um, greater earth elemental stone breeze behind him, and earth elemental horde. So you can see our deployment here. This is what I'm talking about with some of these pictures are going to be harder because the contrast is so high um, where we're sitting. But as you can see, uh, my, my general idea is obviously, you know, like I said, kill, kill his dogs with my rangers, meet him in the middle, um, hope that what I have set up, I, I, got, I generally have pretty much the matchups I want, so let's hope that what I did works out. Uh, Vanguard, I just moved these guys up enough. Um, so that if I get turn one, I can shoot without moving, essentially. We roll up for turn one, and turn one goes to the herd. So he moves his dogs way up like this, knowing there's nothing he's going to do to stop me. And the rest of his army just moves up at full. Um, the uh, um, monument statue thing on the left is just impassable. Everything else on the board is essentially just hills. Um, this is another case where in this, this tournament there was not sufficient number of obstacles and forests for the tables. Um, this is probably just a, a, a uh, carryover from those things not being quite so important in fantasy, which these guys used to run tournaments for. So just, a, just an FYI, obviously. So uh, he's a little boxed up over there, which I like. Um... You can see he just moves up full all the way. So um, that's just what it looks like. So we'll jump right into Dwarves, turn one. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do as good of a job with movement pictures in this in this particular game, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll explain everything that happens. So over here, these two Ranger troops, we double charge the dogs just to make sure. Um, the Ranger captain comes flying over to hit the stampede. Um, now... I know this will, if, if the ranger captain does a point of damage, which he's likely to do, he'll take away their thunderous charge. I don't actually need him to take away his thunderous charge because that troop or the, those uh, bulwarkers there have phalanx. Um, my actual hope here was uh, he would counter charge the uh, ranger captain just to just to say, oh, wow, that guy's kind of annoying. 
maybe I should get rid of him with a stampede instead. I, I didn't know if you'd think he'd fall for it, but I thought, hey, Ranger Captains doesn't have much else to do this turn. Uh, and otherwise, yeah, everyone just moves up, um, waiting for the charge. I know it's coming, um, but I'm just making sure that his his Guardian Brutes can make the charge, his Spirit Walkers can make the charge, but neither of those Longhorn troops are making the charge next turn. So, shooting, you know, damage on the Brute Tox, nothing special. Uh, these Rangers actually do really bad, um, but the dogs aren't very uh, stout, so they route, which is very good, and my Rangers turn around like such. Uh, my ranger captain does two points of damage, which is pretty good. Um, so we come around, and here's what here's what the board looks like. So just remember, the scenario is invade. So uh, we start off to turn two. Um, so here's here's what I'm saying. Where I I missed some of the movement here, but I'll try to I'll try to get what he did uh, better overall. So he charges, he double charges his brutox and um, stampede into my ball worker regiment. He also bane chants his stampede, so that's that's what that is. Uh, he ignores my ranger captain, which is probably smart, and he goes in. <clears throat> um, so of course, they route. Um, it was just you know, fourteen damage was just way too much. Um, over here, the spirit walkers had charged my ironclad regiment. Um, he did more than eleven points of damage. I was just trying to show with the dice that he he came in and he and he did what he did. Um, and of course they route, which is fine. Um, and then the last movements you can kind of see here is his guardian brutes went in against my greater earth elemental. And one of the saving graces here is his um, second shaman failed his bane chant on those guardian brutes. So they're quite they're quite deadly. Um, they're probably his best bet at this case for taking out the greater earth elemental but he rolls poorly like really poorly <clears throat> and you can see he only does four points of damage so of course they bounce nothing you can do um here's an overview you can see way at the top his um longhorn troops are just kind of moving around knowing um that they can hopefully get in the flank in the future so um dwarves turn two um, a double charge of my earth elementals and greater earth elemental into those guardian brutes. I want, I want them dead. This, this will do it. No problem. Um, my shield breakers go into the, uh, the spirit walkers, which is actually not a good matchup for them. Their, their crushing strength becomes redundant. Those spirit walkers have a ton of, uh, a very high nerve. So. Um, on the top there, my ranger captain charges that shaman because he doesn't have much else to do. Um, and my army standard bearer goes to stand in front of this, or go, go sacrifice himself in front of the stampede. Um, over here, my rangers are just kind of uh, mucking around just so that they can both get shots off this turn. Uh, we move into shooting, and I get a bane chant off on my greater, or my earth elementals, which just um, certainly seals that deal. Uh, we move into some shooting, um, six points of damage on these uh, on the stampede, which is you know it's pretty good. Uh, in a combat, the uh, the ranger captain does one point of damage, but he actually wavers the shaman, which is which is pretty funny. Um, you can see I just I just rolled really well. Um, in a combat, the shield breakers don't do what they need to do. Um, they do okay, you know they're just. There's just this is one of those cases where there's just too many bodies for them to chop down. This isn't perfect for them, but they do okay. Over here, though, of course, we uh, we route that route the crap out of these guys, the guardian brutes, and we reform. So here you can see the um, elementals, earth elementals have have reformed to take both of those longhorns in the front. Um, I think they can they can take that. So it's going to be a little tough because those guys are those guys are you know they're not they're not slouches so. And then yeah, he said, here's an overview of Dwarf's turn two. So I've obviously taken, <laughs> my, my ranges are good. Um, and we're just flying around. So uh, we're moving to turn three. Turn three, uh, we get a double charge here of the uh, Spirit Walkers and the Brutox into my um, Shield Breaker. So that's, that's not good for them. The uh, Stampede goes charging into my Army Standard Bearer. On this side, uh, double charged by the Longhorns into the Earth Earth Elementals. 
into his shooting, he gets a uh, Bane Chant off on his Spirit Walkers to give them some crushing strength. Uh, we move into combat, and he does 17 points of damage to my uh, my um, Army Standard Bear, and then rolls double once. So, the the most impervious to damage Army Standard Bear of all time. Um, he's fine. On the other hand, um, these guys uh, do a, a combined 16 points of damage to my shield breakers, which is you know, quite a lot, but that isn't a really good matchup for them. Uh, and they get um, wavered. So, I mean, at least they're still there, but um, over here, the uh, double uh, charge here, he does about 7 points of damage to my elementals, and they're fine. So the end of herd 3 looks like such. We move into dwarves, turn three, and I fail my headstrong roll on my shield breakers, so that's that's fine. Uh, my elementals uh, pick one of the uh, troops here to counter charge. Um, some shooting, we shoot up the uh, the uh, stampede here, and we actually end up wavering it, which is really pretty big. Um, not that the stampede has a lot to do at this point, but. Um, I, I guess it's it's pretty big. It's 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 good, and so we're we're tearing these guys up slowly but surely. Um, the Earth, Greater Earth Elemental went into a flank charge on the Spirit Walker Horde, and without any real trouble, routes them. As you can see, and doesn't really do much in his reform. Um, over here, the Earth Elementals, I probably be enchanted them by the look of it. Took out their their troop. No problem, and reform to take these guys in the front. Um, back here, this guy does another point of damage to the uh, shaman, um, just to keep him from casting. Essentially, he's got he's got nothing else to do back there. So, you know, dwar dwarves turn three looks like this. Um, you can see it's still kind of a mess in the middle. Um, I really, really wish I had uh, made my headstrong roll on those shield breakers. So, if I had made that headstrong roll, that brute tox would be dead, and we'd be way more up on points. But Dwarves turn four, or not dwarves, herd turn four. Um, the uh, Longhorns um, go charging back into my Earth Elementals. Um, the Brutox goes to finish up those Shield Breakers. Um, I think a Shaman up top charges my um, Ranger Captain. Um, over here, the Stampede just pivots because he's wavered, so he can't do much. Yeah, the Brutox. The Brutox finishes these guys. He was going to. And he reforms like this. Um, what I didn't expect to come here is these, these get, he just rolled out of the box um, for his Longhorn troop here. So he ended up doing eight points of damage, which is more damage than the two Longhorn troops did in a single round. Um, so he actually routes these guys. I didn't, this, is this I didn't expect. This was a rough one. Um, I expected these guys to, to hold here. Uh, so they're gone. Um, and he does a point of damage to my ranger captain, but whatever. So move over to dwarves turn four. Um, dwarves turn four over, and these guys are just piddling around. The ranger captain, you can see there, he went and flew way, way, way away um, to get away from those fights just to conserve his points and, you know, hang out. Um, I, I moved my greater earth elemental... Out of the line of sight of the Brutox. He said, I don't want anything to do with that Brutox. I'm not going to kill him. It, it, the, the Greater Earth Elemental doesn't have that many attacks. He just has eight attacks. He's not going to kill a regening inspired healable Brutox. What he can do <laughs> is run away and, and conserve his points. So he does. Um, in the next phase, you can see, and then I even surged him more um, with my Earth with my stone priest to make sure that those uh, longhorn troop also couldn't get to him uh, and the rest of the shooting um, the, the other people shoot and they they, uh, they route that stampede which is which is pretty fantastic so uh, pretty scarce board at this point we turn to turn five um, turn five he turns his brutox around um, he turns some other guys to face my stone priest here um, nothing much. You can just see here's what it looks like after movement because most of everything is dead. So um, he does a healing on the shaman here. Nothing special. So jump right into dwarves turn five. Um, 
my stone priest, you can see there, hightails it up between his two shamans. Um, my earth elemental moot turned and continued to run away from the Brutox. Um, I think I do surge him too. No, I don't, because I, I had to march. But he's out of line of sight, so he's cool. Um, and over here, yeah, just making sure everyone moves up into a scoring position. So not, not terribly exciting. Um, move on to turn six. Um, turn six, he turns his longhorns around, um, and he double charges my stone priest with his two shamans. Um, over here, he just kind of moves the brutox this way for whatever purpose. Um, in combat, his shamans fail to do any damage to my stone priest. Which I think is just a uh, a solid reminder of dwarf characters are pretty tough. They're, I mean. You know, he's an he's an eleven thirteen defense five. He's not bad. He's not bad. So, uh, dwarves turn six. Um, continue the uh, art of running away. So we run away. Um, yep. And uh, these guys over here just turn. Um, so everyone can shoot at the brutox. Just in case, like somehow I just pull something way out of my butt. Um, I don't though. So the end of door turn six, we see if there's a turn seven, and there is. So we go into turn seven. Um, the herd turn seven. Um, looking at his odds, he decides he's going to take that troop O um, Longhorns and charge my Stone Priest. Um, the troop of Longhorns is 100 points, and the Stone Priest is 120 points. So if he kills the Stone Priest, it's a 20 point swing in his favor. If he sits still, it's just a guaranteed 20 more points in my favor. So it was kind of an all or nothing um, regard. We, we looked like just quickly over the field and figured, yeah, I probably have enough points to win this, even if he sits still. So he charges. Um, he bane chants. But he still only does four damage um, to my stone priest. And my stone priest hangs out. He survives. Wavered. So... Um, don't, I, I did take a turn seven. It just didn't matter because I wasn't going to shoot anybody to death that mattered. Um, so result, the result is a dwarf victory. Um, the dwarves ended up scoring 760 points while the horde scored 470 points. So even if he had kept his longhorns in his, in his zone, um, it still would have been the required 150 point difference, um, for the dwarves to win. So, it was a gamble, but actually, yeah, looking at that, too, it, it didn't matter. Either way, we, we played that last turn for essentially no reason. But, well, 120 points would have dropped me to five, 640, which still, yeah, I sold one. Yeah, okay, so we wasted some time, but that's fine. So, yay, dwarves. So, some thoughts. Um, it was an interesting game. Um, not terribly tactical for a lot of it it was essentially just smashing each other um i think i think in this game i honestly won in the deployment phase um i got i got the matchups i wanted um <clears throat> i got lucky on a, on a few cases um especially with my uh <clears throat> my um army standard bearer getting the double one to survive his stampede onslaught it was big um i probably still would have killed that stampede with my rangers but it was it was a it was it was not insignificant um it would have it would have been a, a, a you know I, I have to say too that, that that the um the odds also went in his favor with some of the some of the luck he he did take out my earth elemental horde luckily i i don't think they should have take, been taken out um and i did feel my headstrong roll on my shield breakers which is why his brutox lived so i mean it, it went both ways um i think as far as as yeah i i would say i won because of deployment and a l reasonable, I, I think luck was, was even, even, even in total. So, um, at the, at the end of this, it ends up picking me up to uh, table one for the tournament. Um, so it's a three game tournament. Um, uh, I've won two games, so not surprising. I'm on, I'm on table one. Um, but we'll, we'll catch you guys in that next one. And thanks for watching.